the new Snapdragon X chips versus Apple's M3 chips. Who wins? Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. So if you have not been under a rock lately, you know one thing, that the brand new Qualcomm Snapdragon X chips are coming out. There's gonna be a plus version and an elite version. And what they're claiming is they're faster, at least in their kind of, they had some talks online, Microsoft did. They're saying that they're faster than the M3 Air chip, which is really the base M3 chip, right? Anyways, so what does winning actually mean? And we're gonna kind of talk about that in this video. We're also gonna go ahead and do real benchmarks, or at least what we have so far, that came from Qualcomm directly. And we're gonna compare them against the M3 chip, the M3 Pro chip, and then the M3 Max chip. And on the other side, it's gonna be the Qualcomm Plus chip, uh, or the, you know, the Snapdragon X Plus, and then the Snapdragon X Elite, and then the Snapdragon X Elite even faster one. There's a couple different versions there. So we're gonna see what's faster and what does faster actually mean and who wins, right? I think the only winners here are gonna be Microsoft and Apple because they charge a thousand bucks to $5,000 for their laptops. I think we're all the losers, but let's get into it. All right, I'll have a link to this, but I wanna show you my sources here. I'll have a link to this, and this is a great site. Obviously, Tom's Hardware, if you have not checked them out, check out the link, they do great reviews and everything. But on here, what I found is, the, the three Qualcomm chips are the, the Snapdragon chips that I'm gonna be talking about here that I'm gonna be comparing to the M3 Air, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max chips are right here. So here's the first one. And you can see it here. This is gonna just be a 10 core chip, but this is gonna be the plus, The it's called the X Plus, Snapdragon X Plus right here. 10 core chip, and this is coming right from, look at it, right from them. It's off their box, basically, so I believe this is accurate. These are the statistics in here. You can pause it really quickly here if you want, but I'm not, you know, obviously I'll have the link to go here to Tom's Hardware. You can take a look at this, but I'm gonna show you this in a second anyway. And then over here, we got these other two chips. One's called, let me just see here, one's the Snapdragon Elite, and it's gotta be the X1E80100. It's a 3.4 gigahertz with paired with 16 gigs of RAM. That's gonna be the test, because here's the numbers right here. And then the third one that's gonna go in, go against the Max chip is gonna be the Snapdragon X Elite, the X1 E84 100, 3.8 gigahertz, all right? You can see it here. But this one's paired with 64 gigs for some reason. But here's the benchmarks over here. Again, you can pause it if you want to. But don't worry about that because we're gonna get into it in more detail here in one second. But I just wanted to show you where my sources were coming from. All right, the first test is gonna be the Snapdragon X Plus, which is their lower version, versus the M3 base chip, right? So this is the first one. If you look over here at Best Buy, you can pick up this, the Microsoft Surface laptop with the Copilot, they talked about this, right here for $9.99. So this is obviously pre-ordering it, although it comes with 16 gigs of RAM and 256, full disclosure, but that's still gonna be a great cost for, six, you know, for basically 16 gigs of RAM and this chip. Here it is right here. This goes up against the MacBook Air here, around $9.99 right here on sale, so same cost. This only, this only has eight gigs of RAM though. The other one had 16, full disclosure there. Obviously the build quality and software are gonna make a difference. Just wanna show you what we're going up against. So this is the first battle of these two chips, and these are the kind of the price points of the systems you can get them on. All right, take a look at my screen over here. Here it is. Now, my graph's not the best, but it'll give you kind of the overall, you know, the overall feel of what's going on here. Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus versus the Apple M3 base chip. This is a 10-core chip right here versus an 8-core chip. Apple's only got 8 cores. But look at this. Geekbench 6, single core. You can see right here, 2400 for the Snapdragon X and then 3109 for the M3. So it looks like Apple beats it in single core, which could be important because most people do use single core. Now, obviously over here, Geekbench 6 multi-core, or you know, obviously it's gonna make more of a difference with editing and stuff. Looks like Snapdragon chip actually beats it here, 12,900 to 12,003. So it's about a 10% or a little bit less, 9% difference there where Snapdragon wins on that chip, all right? The next one is Cinebench 2004 single thread. It looks like right here, it's 108 for Snapdragon to 141 for the Apple M3. So the M3 picks up the victory there. And then we got Cinebench multi-thread. It looks like for some reason, and this is a little unusual, but it's 835 for the Snapdragon and 711 for the Apple. So it looks like here we got a victory for the Snapdragon. And then finally, we got 3D Wildmark Life Extreme. Uh, this is frames per second, 38 for the Snapdragon and 48 for the M3. So take a look at this graph. I know my graph down here doesn't make a lot of sense because it's so small, but you can see here the difference in the actual single core and multi-core on Geekbench 6. So overall, it looks like you know Apple still has three victories versus two for the Snapdragon. So I don't know if that claim is completely honest when they say it's faster. 
Um, and one thing to note too, and, and we'll get into this in a second, um, but one thing to note that's really important here is if you look at this next graph here, take a look at this, I'll move it over here. But basically, here is the M4 chip, and we know this came out recently, right? This came out on the, what is it, the iPad Pro, and the M4 chip, you can see right here, blows away the Snapdragon X Plus, and this chip's coming out really soon. So if you actually put this against, this is Geekbench 6 single core, 2400 for the Snapdragon versus 3810 for the A10. This is going to be a 10 core chip now, the M4 chip here. And then for Geekbench 6 multi core, it's 12,900 for the Snapdragon, 14,595. So you can see the difference here. So, since I don't know if this is really a victory for Snapdragon, only because obviously the M4 is coming and Snapdragon isn't even out yet. So, we're going to probably be more realistically in this scenario pretty soon. And you can see the big difference here 2400 to 3810. That's a huge difference. So, keep that, take it with a grain of salt, but that's just something to note. All right, now we're going to go ahead and put the Snapdragon Elite chip up against the M3 Pro chip, right? Because this is more, I'll show you why this makes sense. Take a look at my screen. So right now they're going to be selling this Elite chip. Here's the Microsoft Surface laptop. You can pre-order this right now. This is going to have 16 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte SSD, $1599 right now. So it's got 16 gigs, 1 terabyte, and it's around $1,600, right? So if we put this up against over here, let's go over here. $17.99, which is hundred bucks more. This is gonna be the M the M3 Pro chip right there, see it? So about the same cost roughly. This is gonna have, let me see here, two more gigs of RAM, but it's gonna have less SSD space also. So whether, you know, you can claim what's a better deal. Obviously, I don't know the build quality of these Microsoft devices yet, but I wanna show you the difference here between these two chips now. And uh, so let's go into the actual benchmarks here. I'm gonna pull that up over here, make sure I have the right one. Actually, I don't yet. So here you guys are waiting for me. Here we go. So here it is right here. So here we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite 3.4 gigahertz. That's this, the kind of the middle chip against the Apple M3 Pro chip right there. So we have now we have a 12 core Snapdragon chip versus a 12 core Pro chip here. So more of a head to head battle, right? Let's take a look at the numbers here. Geekbench 6 single core 2775 versus 3152 Apple wins. We got Geekbench 6 multi-core, 14,300 versus 15,634, or 32, I'm sorry. We got another Apple victory. Cinebench 2024, single thread, 122 for the, for the Snapdragon versus 140, 142 for the Apple. So it looks like a victory for Apple there. Cinebench multi-thread again. Here's a Snapdragon 950. The Apple's 10,059, slight victory. And then 3D Wildmark, this is where the, the kind of the victory kind of expands here. 39 here for the Snapdragon X Elite, and then 88 for the actual M3 Pro chip. Again, you can look at the numbers here. This is based off of their box. I'm taking the numbers off of Snapdragon's box for this kind of elite chip, which is I would classify it as a pro kind of level chip, you know. And uh, you can see here, and again, this is only the M3. It's not the M4. All right, so the next test is going to be for the Snapdragon X Elite, but the 3.8 gigahertz, their fastest one, versus the M3 Max MAX chip. They never said they could beat that, but I just want to see what the difference is. If you look over here, this is going to be the Apple 2023. This is the M3 Max chip here. It's going to have 36 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, around 2,900 bucks right here on sale. So you're getting up there in cost. I don't know what their version is going to cost. It's probably going to be less than this, to be honest with you. So you got to take that with you know kind of a grain of salt there because if it's less, obviously you got to weigh the options. Overall, though, here we go. Snapdragon, Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite 3.8 gigahertz versus the Apple M3 Max chip. And they're both 12, well, one's, this is a 12-core chip. This is a 14-core. Apple's got the little lead here with two different cores, two more cores, obviously. So here we go. Geekbench 6, single core, 2,900 for the Snapdragon, fastest one. And then 3,159 for the Max chip here. So obviously, Apple takes the victory. Geekbench 6, multi-core, it's 15,200 for the Elite chip, 19,405 for the Max chip. Apple wins there as well. And then for Cinebench, 2,024, single thread, 127 versus 142, so Apple takes a slight lead there as well. Cinebench 2024 multi-thread, we got 1170 versus 1373, so pretty good you know, difference there as well. And then we got 3D Wildlife um, Extreme, uh, what is this? I don't know if it's Extreme actually, I believe this is just 3D Wildmark, and it's uh, frames per second, I apologize about that. But anyways, it's 43 here, and then this is gonna be 118. So you can see the difference here, obviously, the M4s are coming out soon, so this is going to expand this. But I've, and, and they didn't claim that they're going to be beating the M3s. They only said the M3 Error, the, M, the base M3 chip. It looks like they had a couple small victories there. But what does all this mean now? 
All right, so we have to take the numbers. Those numbers were straight off kind of the box of Qualcomm Snapdragon chips. So they have to be fairly accurate. And they're probably shown in the, in the best positive light for them. So I don't, we have to get some real world testing here before we know all this stuff for sure. Obviously, we saw that in the very first chip, which is the Snapdragon X Plus chip, I believe it's called. They actually had some victories over the M3 chip, but not all of them. In fact, M3 had a couple more victories there. And then we had, we had onto the other chips, the Pro and the Max. Obviously, the Pro and the Max beat the Snapdragon Elite chips. Obviously, there's a you know going to be an Ultra coming out. There's going to be the M4s coming out. So at the end of the day, though, when you take all these different numbers together, who actually wins this, right? Who wins? The way I look at it is this, and I've said this a million times in my videos, right? I always tell people, pick up the product that makes sense for you. And I think the winners in this is going to be all of us, right? So what this basically has done is Apple made such a good chip with the M3, the M2, the M1 chip that it made Microsoft, made Intel, maybe they're coming later, made obviously Qualcomm, Snapdragon. They're all thinking about what they can do to kind of compete here and they produce this Snapdragon chip. Obviously, this is getting better and better and better. So it's a really good chip. I'm not going to downgrade this chip. I mean, for the cost, it's going to be a little bit cheaper, some of the laptops. You might get a little bit more RAM and stuff. So if you're a Windows user, it's a plus for everybody, right? I mean, the winners are going to be us because it kind of makes Apple, you know, Apple's going to have to get on its horse and keep moving, right? It's going to have to keep moving forward. The M4s are going to have to come out. The M5s just have to, everything's going to have to keep getting better because competition's high right now. So I think if we look at this, I mean, a lot of people call out like what's better, what's not. And they, you know, I'll get comments like, you know, Apple sucks and this, and this is what better. It doesn't really matter, right? At the end of the day, I think we all win because Apple actually helped create these chips, I believe, because of the competition. And now it's going the other way back, right? So we're going to have to keep, you know, integrating here. And I think it's just a win-win for everybody. A couple of really quick things to note too, though. Obviously, build quality in these laptops and stuff, and also the, the software. The software makes a big, you know, play on how how these things are going to perform. We know Apple software is like fully integrated into everything it does. It works flawlessly. There's a very few bugs and stuff. Now, this new these are going to be ARM chips on kind of the the Microsoft. You know, we don't know how all those programs are going to work with them and if there's going to be issues and stuff. So we don't know if the performance will be there, even though the chips, you know, maybe they benchmark high, but they don't perform that well. We don't know until we get them in hand and stuff. But overall, I think they have really good chips coming out. All right, we're going to wrap this up, but listen to this last part of it because it's important. I mean, things keep getting better and better every day. Technology keeps getting better and better every day. This co-pilot thing and what Apple's going to come out with soon has got me a little bit worried, right? So overall, I hope that at the end of all this, I hope that this co-pilot or whatever Apple comes out with does not produce a whole generation of morons that can't even decide to go outside. You know, like something like, hey, Siri, can I go outside or is it too scary for me? I hope that doesn't come out, right? Because it seems like we're going that direction. The way I look at technology is definitely use it so that you can kind of fund your life, all right? Get a job, fund your life with these devices, but don't live your devices. Or don't live your life through these devices is what I always say. If you live your life through this device, you have no life at all. Get out, enjoy outside, see the sun, right? See the cicadas. They're in Chicago today. Anyways, we'll talk to everybody soon in the, you know, in the near future here. And I do videos every one, well, every two to three days roughly. I'm working hard, so definitely support me. You know, hit the like button, please. And we'll talk to you soon. Peace.